verification. My PowerPoint died. Oh well. Oh well. Um, yeah. Basically, every day when I go to work, I pass through the Commercial Broadway SkyTrain station. Now, if you've ever been there before, and if you've ever just like looked up, even just slightly, you'll notice there's a lot of surveillance cameras pointed down at you. And if you were so bored as to wait for an expo line on a cold Friday night and to count them, you'd find that there are 26. <laughs> um, but this makes sense. I mean, security cameras provide us security. This is obvious. This is what we expect. But one of my main kind of concerns in general is when technological process, progress outpaces legal progress. So that's to say that as technology gets to a point where the cost to store all the video footage decreases to a point where it doesn't make sense not to do it, and when things like facial recognition get better, and they're already pretty good as it is, and you become able to query those data sets, though that combination introduces a whole new set of problems. And so what I believe is that we need strong policy to prevent abuse. Because even just this last year, we found out that the RCMP and CSIS was spying on environmental activists who opposed the pipeline. Right? So right now, we don't have this. We have guidelines, which they're like suggestions. They're not legally binding. They don't really mean anything. All they have to do is say, well, terrorism. And then it's just <laughs> completely gone. National security works too. Um, but what I realize is that nobody cares, right? Nobody really thinks about surveillance. Like nobody, not a nilch. It, it, I don't blame them because it's not a very riveting topic, right? But um, I think there's a lot of reasons for this, but one of them is that we can't see surveillance. When we look up at a camera grid, we just see a bunch of boxes hanging from the ceiling, right? We don't see how wide it can see, how far it can see, any occlusion, the angle, the geometry, we don't see any of that. Right? The effect is disassociated from the cause. So what I want to do is, pun fully intended, is to think outside the box, to get you to, next time you see a camera, not just see a box hang from the ceiling, but to actually mentally project an image of what that surveillance looks like. And you'll see what I mean in a minute by that. But I did a whole bunch of stuff to do this, everything from photogrammetry all the way down to setting up a web server in Amsterdam. Um, but long story short, I made a video game. <laughs> So essentially, if you go to, I'm going to flip out of this, um, the isovis.com, you can actually pretty much play this. Um, and so what I did is I, went, I built basically a game in Unity game engine. And you can walk around a pretty much scaled model <laughs> of it. And you can see what it all actually looks like. So and you can click the cameras. Um, but one thing is that this how it's presented now, it's pretty complicated. You can't really realize you know, what's going on. So if you go into what I call proximity mode, wherever you stand, it will tell you whatever cameras can see you at a fairly high resolution. All right? So you'll notice they're turning on and off and everything. But we don't just stand in one place in a SkyTrain station. right? We actually move through it. So if you wanted to see how many cameras see you from the, let's say, the escalator to the middle SkyTrain car, you can do the trail mode. And that'll give you a little indicator bar of how many you've been through, and it'll keep them on as you progress through. So if you look at the right-hand side of the mini-map there, uh, you can actually see a giant trail behind me of which cameras saw me, essentially. And so you can also switch to view two, and click on a camera. And then the blur is just representative of the degrading resolution as you go on. But yeah, you can essentially try this at home. So it's just <laughs> theisofist.com. <laughs> And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What was your